Gate Physiotherapy in Parkinson's Disease. In this video, we will talk about rehabilitation of gait in Parkinson's disease. The exercises can be divided into static and dynamic. That is, first we train the movement patterns statically and then we do the exercises while walking. Postural correction. We will ask the patient to look straight ahead with the shoulders towards the back and with the arms relaxed at the sides of the body. Swinging the arms. This can be done at a free rhythm or facilitated by elements such as sticks controlled by the physiotherapist. By increasing the range of the arms, the patient tends to rotate the trunk, which decreases with the progress of the disease. Milestones of support phase. We go over the kinematic milestones, exaggerating heel contact, mid support, and toe takeoff. Milestones of oscillation phase. The patient is asked to statically perform the movement of hip flexion, foot dorsiflexion, and heel support, doing it in an exaggerated way. We have to keep in mind that knee flexion in gait is passive, so it depends on the forward acceleration of the thigh. Rhythm with objective feedback. We use an objective feedback, like a metronome, to mark the patient's rhythm. The number of steps per minute will depend on the speed the patient has and on the length of the steps. Keep in mind that the normal speed is over 1.20 meters per second and that we usually do around 100 steps per minute. Remember that in Parkinson's disease, patients take many steps but short ones, and this is precisely what should be avoided. Start by training a slow rhythm, like 60 beeps per minute to 100 steps per minute. You can combine this exercise with the movement of the arms. This will make the patient incorporate the rhythm on the whole body and can coordinate the pelvic and shoulder girdles in a reverse rotation. That is, while the shoulder girdle goes to the right, the pelvic one goes to the left. When we start exercises of dynamic gait, we begin by correcting the patient's posture. Step length with objective feedback. This is probably one of the most important exercises in Parkinson's disease. The most effective way is to place visual marks on the floor so that the patient has a goal to achieve. The patient has to try to do the heel support at the level of the mark. The distance between the marks must be placed according to standard parameters. The normal step length is usually between 120 and 150 meters, depending on the height and age of the patient. Therefore, we should start by placing marks 60 centimeters apart. The goal is for the patient to walk in a steady and fluid way, without losing balance, and with step lengths within normal parameters. We always start by coming along with the patient's arm. When the patient walks with long steps, his kinematics also improve. Objective rhythm with long free step. Now we retrain the rhythm with an objective feedback. If necessary at first, we will come along with the patient by the arm. Don't include the step length right away. Let the patient incorporate the rhythm of the free step. Rhythm with objective length step. Once the patient has trained separately rhythm and step length with objective feedback, we can combine both strategies to train with full speed control. Swinging the arms. Now we will incorporate dynamic arm swing to gait. This will make the patient improve the posture and rotate the trunk normally. Time is needed for the patient to coordinate arms and steps. Remember that the arm that leads forward is the opposite of the leg that takes the step. Reinforcement of gait milestones. We ask the patient to exaggerate lower limb kinematics during gait. Supervised turns. We introduce cones to practice turns in a safe way. The most important thing is that the patient turns with several steps, not all at once. Direction changes. Practicing direction changes in rehabilitation will make the patient block less when they have to do them in daily life, avoiding loss of balance and falls. 
It is not necessary to change direction quickly, but to do it safely in two or three steps. We can also add lateral gait as a dynamic exercise. Gait with proprioceptive difficulty. This is a high demand exercise. The patient is asked to walk while counteracting the exaggerated movement of his pressure center due to the instability of the ground. Steps and obstacles. They are an added difficulty to gait training. Overcoming these obstacles will help the patient avoid gait blocks in daily life as well as walking more safely. Last, we can ask the patient to add dual tasks while walking. We will do it on a flat surface and both cognitive and motor tasks of the arms can be used. Thank you for using this educational e-platform.